As a rugby player, we've got to be strong enough, fast enough, powerful enough to de-cleat our opponents, to scrum, to score a try. We're going to give you five key exercises that you can use to become an explosive rugby player, and we're going to start right now. So in rugby, we need to be fast. We need to be athletic. We need to be really, really strong. And most importantly, we need to move heavy weight fast. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're looking at movements, if we've got big dudes and they're out on the pitch, they might lose a lot of power by the end of a game, okay? If we have smaller guys, they might not have a lot of power even in the beginning of the game, so they're getting lit up by their opponents, okay? So we need to train some way to improve global innervation, which will in turn lead to high rates of high threshold motor unit recruitment. Okay, that's gonna help us produce a large amount of power in a short period of time. We need to train that dynamic trunk control so that we can be more agile, okay? So that we can make better moves, so that we can have better contact. And this exercise is going to be a power clean, full clean. So fortunately, we have Yvonne here who's gonna demonstrate with perfect technique how to execute a power clean and a full clean. And typically what we would do, if we've got a rugby player or a football player, somebody like that, we're gonna do maybe five single power cleans, so you would do a single and then you might do two full cleans. We might do eight singles of a single power clean and a single full clean on the minute to really try and train that long power endurance. Okay, so Yvonne's gonna show us a power clean into that full clean with perfect execution and good speed. And then watch when he catches this, okay? Get into the fold. Good, up fast, good. So that's a big key component, is that we wanna absorb that energy, get into that fold really quickly, have that stretch shortening cycle getting out of the hole, make sure we have that optimal level of mobility and hip structure, and absorb that energy as well as possible and reuse it. Okay, so when we're here, that's gonna help us be more agile out on the pitch. That's gonna help us make better decisions. And that's another key factor that we need to talk about with the power clean and full clean, is that it's important that we use aggression and maybe anger to a point to get some work done in the weight room. But one of the best aspects behind technical coordination is that you have to think logically to execute this movement, okay? So once you start to think about that, then you start to learn the skills of co-contractions. When you have co-contractions, you diminish muscle slack. When you diminish muscle slack, you can produce more force in those co-contractions. So that might be where we're creating a co-contraction in our knee joint, so we can cut a little bit harder. In our hip, so we have a better hip lock position. So that's the main factor here behind this technical coordination movement. Let's get Yvonne to show us one more time. One power, one full. A little faster, Yvonne. Good. Up fast, good. So use this movement, power clean, full clean, at least once a week in your explosive rugby training. If you wanna show off your new gains by wearing this sweet garage strength specific swole t-shirt, make sure that you enter to win our free giveaway by commenting down below, making sure that you have all of your channel notifications on and show up to our Tuesday Live to find out if you got that sweet swole shirt. Now, let's get back to turning you into a freak rugby player. So when we're looking at the strength characteristics needed for rugby, we have to look at it through the lens of it being an open skilled sport. And what that means is that anything can happen at any time. There's no predetermined motor pathways, okay? So at any given time, you might have to move, you might have to cut, you might have to jump, you might have to hit somebody, you might have to enter into a scrum at high speeds. And so when we're doing something along those lines, think about getting into a scrum. That's where we need to train specifically the blast impulse, okay? So blast impulse is gonna be any Anything where we have to produce a large amount of force in under a second. Think about for American fans out there, if you're making contact coming off the line as an American football player, that's what we need to be training for. So in the realm of rugby, we have to be able to train that specific characteristic, but also understand that we've got 40 minute halves. And if we're playing sevens, we're gonna have 14 minute halves. But either way, we better be able to obtain a large amount of force and handle that force with power endurance over a long period of time. So not only do we need to be extremely strong and extremely explosive, but 
you probably should also be able to have a decent 5K. And those are all things that come into understanding the lens of training an explosive rugby player. And here are seven other exercises to help build your rugby athleticism. So technical coordination movements are phenomenal for the legs, but are they really good for the upper body as well? Of course they are. And if we're trying to declare an opponent, okay, we're out on the pitch, we're declaring an opponent, we want to light somebody up. This is where this exercise comes into play. This is going to be a linebacker jerk. And one of the big factors behind the linebacker jerk is you're gonna be starting from that athletic stance. So this is named after the linebacker position in American football, but it can help you learn how to react very quickly from that athletic position, from being in that quarter squat. We're doing a technical movement that leads to a large amount of stability overhead, co-contractions in the shoulder, and in turn, that dynamic trunk control in a unilateral position. So Yvonne's gonna demonstrate here what that's gonna look like. I like to do about five sets of three or six doubles ramping to a heavy double, depending upon the athlete's technical proficiency. Now, hopefully, Yvonne drops his back knee a little bit. Let's see it. Get set, good tension in the bar and drive. Good. Be a little bit wider with the right. Give me two more. Good, that's better. One more. And you want to set good tension in the barbell. And this is almost going to be like a vertical jump without that counter movement. So a squat jump. That was a little forward. One more, Yvonne. And so again, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the power clean, full clean. We've got to use logic to fix our technical execution. Good, 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 good. That was a little bit of a good stretch. Okay, so you can do this again, five triples, six sets of two, and this is a great movement that we even like to use to potentiate our muscles before a heavy bench session if we need to focus on our strength for rugby playing. Now, some people don't want to do behind the neck jerks. They don't want to do a linebacker jerk. They might not have access to jerk boxes. And one of the coolest features inside of our app Peak Strength is that you can actually replace exercises. So in the case of not having linebacker jerks or not having access to jerk boxes, you can actually replace that with a banded PA press, okay? And even if you don't have a band, and I'm using our HAF Power Elastic here, we can even do this without a band. However, I really do like having that band for that hip extension. Okay, so if I'm gonna get set here, I'm already extending my hips, all right? So I'm gonna be here, Boom. 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 One more. Boom. So I can do a so I can do a dumbbell PA press for you know five sets of five. Think about that hip extension connecting into my hands. This is a key exercise that we use to replace technical coordination movements inside of peak strength. If you guys need help with your overall training and you don't really understand what you can do with your rugby strength-based training or how to develop power output over a long period of time, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and you can download Peak Strength for seven free days of training. And during those seven free days, you can cancel at any time. But the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get five free workouts. And those five free workouts might have some unique movements like that dumbbell PA press, which is gonna help you become a more explosive rugby player. So rugby players should be squatting, back squatting traditionally, front squatting traditionally, probably once a week. But there's another movement that we could be doing to become more explosive. And if we use something like the garage strength contrast method, we can start to get more explosive as a rugby player while increasing our strength. And I would recommend doing a unilateral strength exercise, okay, and then pairing that with another movement that's going to be very complex and force you to develop that dynamic trunk control. And that's what's gonna take us into the single leg squat. So if I'm training explosive rugby players, right, I want them to be strong in a single leg position. There's going to be a lot of running. There's going to be a lot of contact when you're running. So we need to be as rigid as possible and really be able to produce a large amount of force. So we're gonna execute single leg squats that are unbroken. So let's say we're going to do a set of three using our garage strength single leg roller and pad available at garagestrength.com. Boom, boom, boom. We get a little bit of a forward lean. That's gonna help us develop those glutes and those quads. Okay, so we're here. Boom. Okay, focus on good speed. Now, I'm gonna rest for about 30 to 40 seconds, and I'm gonna show you this sweet 
contrast movement. This is going to be a chaos kettlebell drop into a lunge. And what I like to do is use something like our heavy power elastic here, our HAF power elastic band. You can wrap this twice if you want. Although when you're talking about rubber, you shouldn't be wrapping things twice. So that's gonna help us in this position. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my lead leg go with my left side. I'm gonna have my right side be open. I just stimulated a large amount of high threshold motor units there. I wanna focus on my trunk position. I'm gonna go boom, one, two, back up. Boom, one, two, back up. Boom. Okay, and we wanna make sure that we have that tension in the trunk and we're not falling all over the place. That's gonna help us get into the fold and be more athletic and handle those blows. Okay, so we're here, get set. Boom. One thing you can do too as a coach is watch an athlete on the single leg squat, see how well they coordinate, see if there's a weak side, and then compare that with high speed movements like this. Boom. One more. Boom. So you can do five triples unbroken on the single leg, rest about 30 to 60 seconds, get to the drop chaos kettlebell lunge and improve your overall force production and that athletic ability, which will lead to making you a more explosive rugby player. Plyometric work is great for building that elasticity, that blast impulse, which will also lead to making you a better athlete. And so when we're training plyometrics, we've got to look at rugby and think about positions out on the pitch that athletes are going to get into. They're going to enter into scrums bilaterally. They're going to be sprinting unilaterally. They're going to be jumping bilaterally and unilaterally. So we need to take that feedback and understand that when we're developing a program using plyometrics, you know, specific to how we develop our program inside of peak strength, our day three is going to be athlete day focused. And you might see these exact exercises. And that first key movement is going to be a bilateral side jump over a bench. Okay. In our case, we're going to be utilizing our single leg roller. Again, it's available at garagestrength.com. So we're going to be here. Okay. I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to land on that side on my left leg and do two single leg bounds. So that would look like this. I'm here. Boom, boom, boom here. Now I don't want to hop single leg bound, single leg bound land. Okay. Now I would come back and I would do the exact same movement here, but train my landing on my right side. So I go one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Now, that's my first round, so give me a break, especially on that hiccup. Ideally, we would do five sets to each side. I really like using the tape here. Sorry, our turf is totally destroyed. So if you're a turf company and want to sponsor Garage Strength's YouTube channel, feel free, hit us up in the comments down below. I like using that tape because we can see if we plant and jump linearly, that's gonna have better control. It's gonna have better co-contractions inside of our quad. That's a great example there. The next movement I wanna demonstrate is gonna be what we call champion strides. And this is a movement that's absolutely phenomenal for developing that jump cut, okay? So if you're training a lot of American football players or rugby or soccer, and you need to have a jump cut, this exercise is absolutely phenomenal. And it's gonna look like this. We're gonna go bound off of two legs, land on one leg, okay? Bound off two legs, bound off one leg, land on two legs. So it'll be boom, 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 okay? So it's double, single, double, single. Land double. I'll demonstrate one more. Feel a little bit better about my jumping ability now. This is gonna improve our blast impulse. And remember, the games are long. 80 minutes or 28 minutes, 14 minute halves, 40 minute halves. We need to train blast impulse and sustained impulse and we can do that with those single leg squats. And we can also do that here with some really unique plyometrics. So again, this is gonna be that champion stride here. Here. Boom. Oh. Hit those champion strides, five to six sets, improve your overall athleticism to become a more explosive rugby player. What's the hardest thing to catch during a long rugby game? Your breath, duh. <laughs> so that's gonna bring us into the endurance aspect, okay? And one of the big factors that we need to think about is what type of endurance 
do we really need to develop? I do believe there's a big payoff with like long, slow distance, okay? So getting on the assault bike, doing a rower, maybe even going out for a run over the time frame of 45 to 60 minutes. That does have some practical application to rugby playing, but I don't think it transfers the best when we're thinking about developing a freak athlete who's gonna dominate out on the pitch. When we're thinking through that lens, we need to have a large amount of force production that can be repeated. And that's where sprint interval training comes into play. So in this case, I'm gonna pretend I'm outside on a hill. I really, really like this version of sprint interval training for explosive rugby. I'm gonna get set and I'm looking at, let's say five to 10 seconds of all out work. So I'm here, our coach is with us and we're racing each other and we're on a hill, okay? I'm gonna get set, boom, I'm really fast. I'm gonna rest, I can come back. I'm gonna rest for about you know, anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds, get set and repeat, okay? And we might do this over a 20 minute time frame. Okay, 15 to 20 minutes of all out hill sprints. So that could be 10 to 12 to 15 total reps based off of that rest period, based off the action period. But the big factor is that we're training the sprint interval work, we're sprinting at high speeds, getting our heart rate to skyrocket and then drop back down. And when we do this repetitively, once, maybe twice a week, along with the play that we're doing out on the field, along with the work that we're doing inside of the gym, that's gonna lead to better performance. So again, set that 20 minute timer, get out on the hill, get out on the track, run 10 to 12 seconds all out, and then that's gonna to lead to developing your speed and also developing your endurance. <laughs> so explosive base rugby training has to focus on using technical coordination exercises. Then we've gotta get creative and come up with those unilateral absolute strength movements. Pair those with some type of contrast exercise that's gonna help you be more explosive. That's gonna take us into the plyometrics that we hit. And then even those endurance training sessions, focusing on sprint interval training. If you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app and you can pick up our app today. These are personalized programs that I've built specific to rugby. You can download Peak Strength and inside of the actual interface, you can select rugby based training. And you can set your peak date and even target the exact exercises that you can do and the number of training sessions that you want throughout that entire week. Why spend 60 bucks on one personal training session when you can get a workout for the cost of one cup of coffee? Again, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and begin your journey to attain peak strength. Because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.